Good evening, all. My eyes are going crossed. Way too much screen time today. Hello, Mira. Hello, Grammy Evie. Hello, LG Zavala. Hello, Chicago Mama. Hello, TikTok. And even the two trolls that were in earlier. Hello to you guys, too. Hello to Susan and Joni. That's what the troll name says. Des. Tobo. Boy, where were you a couple of days ago, right? They could have used you. Hello, Jay. Hello, Douglas Duff. Microphone working properly this time. Yeah, trolls need love, too. That's right. It is good to have the microphone doing what it's supposed to. Guys, if you catch that sound, please let me know so that we can uh, fix it. Because uh, it seems Windows knows better than I do what I want to do. Let's see. Is pause the good or bad bank? Um, uh, uh, we'll get into that one. Don't worry uh, on that one. <laughs> Can I get a roll tie tonight? Or are you going to remain loyal to your NC team? Well, I'm going to remain loyal to Duke. I would like to see NC State do well, though. Hello, Colleen. Hello, Rocky, Arizona B-Man, Florida Gator. Hello, Boog. Uh, Bob, girl said, love the Buckeyes. My dad was born in Columbus uh, as a young, strapping young lad. Okay, kind of a uh, skinny little tyke. Um, that's where I went to... Uh, that's where I went to kindergarten, was in Columbus, Ohio. Yes, I did. I love the penny picture. And if you want to know what they are talking about, we had a lovely artist in here uh, do a uh, lovely little rendering for me of a penny. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, see? The mic's hiding the cat. See, look. Doop. There it is, hiding. Right around the corner. Hello, Roger. Just drinking but No! Ah, Leo. We're going to have to put some kind of design or sticker on it. Can't have that. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find somebody to ask me. Uh, Artie. Yes, Zester sings as well. Hello, Desert Lady. Hello, Christy. Let's see, I had a second dream that you were walking. You had lost weight. That's a sign of things to come. You must have been getting ready for your mankini. <laughs> Vicky, we don't know the timing. Do we think it'll be done before then? Absolutely, we do believe it will. But uh, anybody that tells you know, they, that they know the exact timing, Unless it is, I don't know, well, no, better not name names, but maybe half dozen people in the world that know that. And I still think it is still dependent on some kind of event. I think they're looking for the proper trigger. Although, pff, come on, we've had plenty. <laughs> George, good to see you in there. I'm just killing time till it's time. It's been a little slow. We got a bank story to share. I thought it was a pretty good one. Crystals, will transportation be arranged for making an appointment for those who have no transportation? Crystals, I've been told by many, many, many bankers that they will make provisions to make certain you get there uh, because they want your business. That is nothing I would worry about at all. Let's see, Daniel, Mark, I just did a deep dive on the actual date of Christmas. Turns out April 6th is the actual birth of Christ. Nine days, President Trump said we we're going to have the best Christmas. <laughs> hey, look, I'll take that, Daniel. I'll run with that one. <laughs> Five line trader, you're killing me, Smalls. You're killing me. <laughs> wow. Joey. It really is crazy with them taxing Social Security, something you already paid taxes on your entire life. 
as you put money, paid income, they took money from you, you put money in after tax, and then they turn around and tax it again. Uh, we can blame Bush Sr. for that, tapping into the Social Security money. It would never be in, it would, it would be so very well funded if Congress hadn't decided that it was so well funded, they could spend some of it. They weren't going to need all of it because people die and they don't, they don't get to claim their uh, benefits. So they started borrowing from us in our retirement. Yeah. And then it became just a cool thing. And then they tell us, man, we've just got all you slackers, all you people that just refuse to work. You should work another 10 years, work to 75, 85, 90, hell with it, work to 100. It'll keep you alive longer. So they just started borrowing on that money and then making us feel guilty. Like, holy crap, it's unfunded. We've got all these unfunded liabilities. Yeah, because you took the money and spent it. You sent it off to places like the uh, yeah, Ukraine, Israel, Pakistan. I don't know. Pick a place where they send our money. Blew it at the border on health care. Pick one. Rick, there are some things, but nothing that affects our timing. Nothing that affects our timing. If I knew that, I would not hold any of that back. Gary, your sense of humor is brutal. Border Patrol asked, any drugs or weapons to the people coming in? The correct response is, why? What do you need? Yeah, I'm just reading some of these. Hello, Miss Kathy. Uh, Kathy, I, I, you'll have plenty of time to turn in coinage. Uh, middle aware, no, that's, that, that's true. We are the party crashers. They never intended for us to figure this out or to take part of it. I'm just reading some of this. Hello, LSU. Hello, Savick. Saw Miss Kukla in the house earlier. Uh, Pelosi used Social Security to pay the first attempt to take Trump down. Oh, yeah, I forgot they did borrow from Social Security, 30 million or so, because um, they need to come up with somewhere to pay for that uh, first um, impeachment trial. I forgot about that. I was just reading some of that uh, from uh, folks commenting. Ah, oh, we finally did get him. We finally did get him in the back office. I wasn't certain he was going to make it. I thought he had stood us up. <laughs> no, 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 no. What is up, everybody? Hope everyone is having a wonderful, wonderful evening. What hello, have y'all been discussing, Pops? Elaine, uh, we've just been really saying hellos and complaining about Social Security because they tapped into it. Something that was very well funded that now is going to be trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars short. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I know that I, I know that I should, you know, care care a whole lot more about it. But being a member of the millennial generation, I uh, never thought I'd ever see a dime of it anyway. So I'm effectively paying into a program, or, or was paying into a program that I would never see a penny back. So, uh, you know, I, I definitely disagree with the government taking money from it. But at the same time, I'm pretty certain that that horse should have been declared dead, uh, you know, 20 years ago. Hmm. Uh, yeah, no, right. Jay, I'm not surprised. All right. They want a bank story. I'm going to hit uh, one of these and uh, read it to them. All right. And you just sit there and nod unless you want me to take you off the picture. So here, I'll take uh, you off no, the picture. So can... time, go all you for just a second. I'll. You know, that way everybody yes. knows what time to tune into. All right. So you know that it's safe to pick your nose. That works. All right. <clears throat> this one, and thank you for the person that sent me their uh, personal one. We've gone back and forth for many years. Consider this to be a uh, solid individual. I had a 22-minute discussion with Armando with JP Morgan. He confirmed several items for me. He said that, that he had received a memo about three weeks ago instructing him how to answer questions about foreign currency exchanges. I asked him about the QFS and what his understanding of it was. He mentioned Onyx. Onyx is a proprietary system that JP Morgan is developing that is, excuse me, guys, that is a digital 
ledger system for cross-border payments. He said that they currently are not exchanging certain currencies. He named the Iraqi dinar and Vietnamese dong and said that a few others, but uh, this person's mind glitched with anticipation, did not uh, remember which those other ones were. So I don't remember what he said. He said he doesn't know when they will be exchanging them, but it could be any time. Uh, I shared some information with him that he did not dispute. Uh, so I, I like that one too. And then we find out that they were instructed three weeks ago with what they could or couldn't say on the subject for something that is just a scam and never happening. Why are they telling them what they are allowed to say and not? And then saying, Hey, they do expect it soon. They just do not know the exact timing yet. They have to prepare for it. Why would they be preparing for something that isn't going to happen? So when I see some of these bank stories, guys, they have a very official line and it's necessary. If uh, they start admitting to everybody it was real, how many bank employees do you think would be left? They would all be rushing out, telling all their friends, all their family in their neighborhood. So I, I love stories like that. And then to find out, hey, yeah, no, received a memo three weeks ago with what I'm supposed to tell and what I'm not supposed to tell on the subject. Oh, but we do expect it soon. I thought that one was a good one. Ooh, North Carolina just legalized online sports betting. Yeah, that's all you see in commercials. It's desperation. Government makes deals where they get a piece of it. And I mean, come on, guys. They'll legalize uh, rape, prostitution, human trafficking if the government gets their piece. Let's just be brutally honest. They have no conscience. They have no morals. They have no character. They just want your money and their power that comes with it. That's my two cents on that one. And then we will ask uh, you if you are as cynical as I am about government there, Zester. Oh, if they can tax it, they'll legalize it. It's usually the only reason that they keep certain things illegal is because they haven't figured out the best way to go about taxing it. And, well, yeah, there are a bunch of different things, though, that it seems as if the government would have quickly acted on. You know, by that same logic, you think they would have uh, legalized marijuana back in, you know, the 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 50s the 60s back when they really really needed the money but at the same time they they never did i guess because you can grow it at home they assumed in the long run their tax revenue would be pretty low so they waited to legalize it until 99 percent of all americans didn't know how to grow a blade of grass then they uh then they started legalizing these things and were like now we don't have to worry about it they're gonna pay their taxes exactly uh new image equestrian it's been talked about Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times you've just been out of the loop. Uh, there's Valentino and his thought. I know Tino. for their Valentino. And so I was All like, right. well, he's got to come make his appearance then. Now I have to leave I have to leave the uh, screen this way so that they can still see Valentino in the bottom corner. <laughs> uh, Central Budgeting Office Director warns of debt market meltdown with U.S. debt in unprecedented trajectory. Our own government is telling us that it's imploding around our ears. Our own accountants are telling us it's imploding around our ears. And our politicians continue to tell us, hey, look over there, not here. We need more money for this or more money for that. It just makes it more and more inevitable, guys. You're watching, you're watching it happen in live, real time. Uh, the problem is it's like watching the ship sink. It's uh, taking longer than we would expect to take on all the water. But, you know, the hole in the side means it's going to sink. Mm -hmm. That's my two cents on that one. A lot of other interesting stuff happening. NTSB says 56 containers of hazardous materials on the cargo ship uh, for you folks in Baltimore. Uh, that is a concern. And here's a crazy, crazy news story for you. Texas Governor Abbott says Operation Lone Star is working as illegal immigrant encounters plunge. Uh, already plunged 28% and continuing to plunge. I think it's just crazy how things like that just work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, it's kind of funny when they when you let somebody actually try to accomplish it. For some reason, it works out. It, it's Right. It's weird how our federal government hasn't been having any success on the matter for uh, for a very long time. Makes you think that they never did actually try. I wonder if we go further back and we look at even Bush Jr. 
uh, who, who saw at least a modicum of success, but really not that much in, in terms of halting the border crisis during his presidency. I, I would imagine that this is probably an issue that isn't even just on the Democratic side. I think it's just nowadays on the right, we care enough to at right. least give our politicians a hard time about it. No, yeah, it's been ongoing uh, for, yeah, just about for ever. It's just politically expedient right now. Although, guys, look for it. I mean, if you're an immigrant, you want to sneak into, and if you're a legal immigrant, I got no problem with you. Come on, we want you. If you want to be here, you want to uh, salute the flag, you want to uh, behave, I mean, uh, obey the Constitution, support it, uphold it, I want you here. I want hardworking, good people here, especially if you're family-minded. Um. But we, uh, oh, I got myself completely distracted with where I was going on that one, on that one. Oh, but if you are and you're thinking about it, and we've got some more stories with organized crime coming uh, across the border, this one coming from Romania. You know that this is an election year. You know it's a hot button topic. You know, Texas is cracking down. You're going to, you know, New Mexico. You're going to California. I mean, the encounters there have skyrocketed up 100, 200%, just crazy numbers. But you also know that there's a really good chance this election is going to go to Trump, who's going to clamp down the border. So they're seeing numbers spike nearly 20, 30% higher already each month this year. Guys, we're in March. And we're already seeing 20, 30% higher numbers than last year, which obliterated every record in the past. So, yeah, look for more unrest at the border because it's a desperation. You get across now or you might not get across at all. Oh, and you also have to add in, too, that we're about to see our, our border resources are about to have to stretch around all of Florida. They're about to have to stretch along the Louisiana coast while continuing to maintain the southern border on account of the crisis in Haiti. The people in Haiti most likely are going to be coming via boat. Uh, some that do have the resources may make their way to Mexico and then attempt to make that journey. But for those that do not have the resources, they're about to get together anything that floats. They're going to strap it all together with enough duct tape and they're going to get on with some paddles. And that means uh, yeah. that we're about to see a border issue that goes way above, way above and beyond the "quote unquote" southern border. Yeah, look, it's look for Cuba. Every, look, every bit of wild water we have, and look for Cuba to tow them right around the corner and point them at Key West. I, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, if I were Cuban, I want to destabilize the U.S. That's totally what I would do. I'd like, hey, look, hey, man, we'll pick you up if you need a little duct tape for that boat. We'll get you sent off. Yep. Just yep. don't stop here. They're going to show up with a pack of floaties and a compass. And yep. I would imagine that it would be the same for every other Caribbean nation. Because, I mean, if you think about it, Haiti is one of the most populous Caribbean nations. I think it may be the most, the most populous yeah, it Caribbean could be. island. And it's only half an island. And I know it has over 11 million people. And we haven't really had an accurate census in Haiti done for, you know, many, many decades. And so any country along the way is is going to be essentially in a do or die saying i'm sorry you can't stop you know uh one tenth of what's coming would be half the population of some of these islands along the way i mean yeah last census last i don't know uh they argue that it was semi-accurate was 11 million for haiti Mm -hmm. Um, and you have a tremendous amount of that population bolting, you know, three to 5 million. And we don't know what the real numbers are because there has been no proper, uh, paper trail at all or recording because of the state of the government there. No, it's rough. Uh, I got a millennial question for you here, Zester. Mm -hmm. Rob popping this one in here. Average new home in 2000, $162,946 today, 417350 and it's not that the homes are that much nicer than they were in 2000. Let's be very honest here. It's your dollar is worth less. But how does your generation see that? I mean, do they go like, oh, my God, man, boy, homes are so much nicer now. They're worth so much more money than they were. Or are they just like, dude, our money's useless. What have you done to it since we were born? Uh, <laughs> home ownership. Is that a word in the English language? Uh, I, I don't know many millennials that are even aware that that's a word. 
Uh, if you're lucky enough to know a millennial that is currently a an owner of any property that is livable, they are probably in what I would imagine is a one percentile. They are the rich kids uh, who actually do own a property during this generation. So for the average millennial, the the idea of even owning a home is foreign. I mean, I think that we, I, I bet that more, I bet that more millennials know that the word homeowner contains the word meow inside of it than our homeowners. And for anyone that is curious, there are very few words in the English language that happen to have the word meow inside of them. Homeowner happens to be one. And to my knowledge, more millennials know that than own a home. <laughs> uh, Lori makes an excellent point here. You never own your home. You don't pay your taxes. Poof, it's gone. Not unless you get lucky and somehow get in the loyal or an area they don't have the property tax. Yep. Can they own their mother's basement? Hey, I, maybe we can do that with NFTs and cryptocurrency. We'll start to tokenize basements. Hey, Lumbago, what are you doing, meow? <laughs> right meow. Right meow. I might need uh, you to get out of the car right meow. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder um, who gets that, uh, who, who knows that uh, movie reference. Yeah, we'll see if anybody uh, pipes in with that one. <laughs> it's a funny one. Uh, mm -hmm. Make your house a truly problem solved. Yeah, the it's definitely a generation that needs to think outside of the box, whether it's a tiny home, whether it's a cob home, whether it's a whatever. It's a generation that you have the ability to get there. You're just going to have to think outside the box. And boy, I tell you, we need a better saying than you got to think outside the box. We need and to think outside the box about a new term for thinking outside of the box. Think about the time that you learned about the idea of a tiny home. You know, tiny homes have been quite the rage now, at least online and in other spaces for the past 10 years or so. If you did a little, uh, you know, a little dive into that one, tiny homes became a big thing right around the age that millennials started to hit their mid-20s. And so the reason that you're seeing this massive, oh, maybe we can build a house out of a shipping container. Maybe we can build a house out of, uh, out of hemp. Uh, maybe we can take, you know, a bunch of pallets and build a house out of it. That's that's because for millennials, that is literally that's the only way to become a homeowner. Like our <laughs> option is to do something like that. It's not achievable for 99 percent of millennials, even those that are doing particularly well. Uh, and that that is unfortunate that in and of itself is is all a part uh, of the the deep state plan where by 2030 you will own nothing and you will be happy the millennial generation is, is really i think the first one where they actually convinced us we genuinely don't believe we will own property on average i'm not saying yeah. that's me but the vast majority of millennials believe they will never own any property yeah we got to come up with a plan to change that thinking um i see yvonne saying rv news we touched on it earlier it's been very quiet today I did uh, manage to get a message from one of banking contacts. They are on call this weekend uh, in the redeeming site, but not working. So, you know, kind of what I expected going to Easter weekend, especially knowing that so many bond contacts have been told to expect final contracts and percent early in the week next week. I'm kind of surprised that um, I continue to get that Monday date from so many of them with it being Good Monday or Easter Monday. Uh, tomorrow being Good Friday, I would expect the financial news to be pretty slow around the world, but we'll see. We do have Militia Man joining in the morning, so uh, he does have a lot of news from this week and a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm just reading some of these. I don't know if you've seen any fun ones. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm rolling through. I'm rolling through. There, There are lots of fun ones at this point. Lots of fun ones. And uh, and also, I, I think oh, it is, David. I think it is a good thing. Hey, I own and live in a tiny house. It's it's a good thing. I think that it's probably something that should extend outside of just the millennial generation. Millennials are doing it because it's a necessity. The idea, though, in and of itself is a good idea. We, we've spent way too much time caring about our uh, our fancy lawn and and our and our house in suburbia. I think that that's what's kept us busy while our government has stolen our children and our next generation's futures. We were busy mowing the lawn. 
Yeah, Win Rider. Yeah, it's been looking for homes in the middle of nowhere, Georgia, median price 250, 300K. Who can afford that with a 7% interest rate? No, exactly. That's crazy. Yeah, it makes me want to, you know, for 70, 80 grand, we can buy, you know, 50 acres here in the mountains and uh, start a tiny home village for anybody that can work remote. Uh, you could, you know, you could be living in a house for 25, 30 grand. You know, it's not going to be huge, but you'd have a safe place to lay your head every night. Crazy. Um, joyful voice. My contacts do not work in any appointment setting uh, location. Uh, we've heard about call centers. I don't have any contacts that work in a call center, or at least that's what I've heard them called. I only have ones that work in wealth management and redemption. So, you know, I don't know what to tell you on that front. Large boat, small lake home. Yeah, I like that idea, uh, idea as well. Becoming a squatter is cheaper. Just don't do it in Florida. They just passed the law to make certain that doesn't happen. <laughs> and I don't think I would try it in Puerto Rico either. I think somebody will just come toss you in the ocean and they won't find you. Yeah, that, that's the irony. I think that uh, for, for younger generations, that video might have uh, that, that video might get reposted with tutorial at the beginning. Tutorial on how to acquire a home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just go squatting <laughs> one. Notes. Maybe we should do a knockoff video, how to die. And it shows somebody trying to squat in rural uh, America and, uh, you know, proper bubble looking person rolls out and removes them. Mm -hmm. yeah, or just feeds them to the dogs. Theory. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Want to have dinner? All right, let's have dinner. Uh, but All right, let's keep going. We've got some interesting news. Now, it is, to me, curious because of the picture they chose for this story. I think I'm beginning to believe Epic Times is uh, changing. They've been hiring so much staff. I think the politics there are changing. But I still find this one easy, uh, interesting. Excuse me. Judge rebukes. DOJ arguments against release of January 6th defendant Kevin Seifried received a three-year prison sentence for obstructing, uh, but they have they have ended it early until the Supreme Court hears a case. They're saying it appears that he will be able to be released early, so they're letting him out for the time in between. Uh, the DOJ argues that uh, they becomes a flight risk, and it is so politically charged now that there's a good chance he may do the same crime again and go to the Capitol. I think anybody that does that would be an idiot in today's world, but I think there's zero chance. They've seen the weaponization of a legal system, but I do. I think they picked that particular picture on purpose to incite division. Do you agree? Don't agree? I mean, there are many other pictures of this particular individual they could have picked. I did a quick search on the net and found, I don't know, about 11 or 12 other pictures they could have used, but they chose that one. No, yeah, yeah, no. controversial. It's all, all for, uh, all for the propaganda. Got to pick those oh. photos. Pick the one that makes people the angriest. That's always the go-to. Always whatever, the go-to. Whatever emotion you can make people feel in the strongest fashion is the best way to market nowadays, and so that's what they do. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, guys. I am in no way ever going to defend racism. It is, it, it, it's, 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 it's ignorant. It's full of hate. I mean, I, I just, I, you know, I can't speak out against it enough um, that violates everything I know about my Bible. But on that one, so for me, absolutely done on purpose. Yet, yeah, Derek, and that, that does suck. They don't know the true history, and that makes it difficult because for some, it's history, not hate. But at the same time, to probably 80% of the world out there, it represents hate, whether that's proper or not. They just haven't read the history. but. Yeah, for me, they're stirring the pot on purpose. Well, apparently I have got to go uh, to go get Tino. And also, because I've noticed uh, Bert Silverado, this is actually a different Whiskey and Wisdom shirt, guys. This is the original Whiskey and Wisdom shirt. This shirt is easily five years old at this point. Yeah, I don't think we had them that long ago, but it's probably getting close. It's got to be real close. It's got to be real close because this was the original one that Kukla ever made for 
the the beginning of whiskey and wisdom so i have more than one copy of this shirt guys more than one copy and it's chilly outside and i don't have many long sleeve shirts so i have to use the ones that i do have <laughs> but i'm gonna wow. go try and get a tino all right go get a tino we're gonna talk about this one as the political winds change, legal winds change, people lose some of their fear as Supreme Court and different courts start making judgments about the excessive punishment by the DOJ. Victoria White files a $2 million suit for police using excessive force in January 6th beating. Guys, if you've seen any of the footage out there, and there's a bunch of them, the police beat her with batons, fists, you name it. She just was in the wrong place at the perfect or right time. Um, absolutely obsessive. You see that with a number of them. They went straight to military-grade pepper spray when there was no need to, inciting, pretty much inciting their own riot. Uh, or at least it's been argued by many experts in the field, even law enforcement experts, that they their excessive use of force uh, made the riot far worse, which uh, I'm totally buying, or the protest worse, whatever word you want to use for it. But I find this one interesting because we are now seeing people fight back uh, legally by using the court system, weaponizing it back, which I think is a great thing. <laughs> a tree beard. I'll have to look for it. Helen Perry. Let's see. I'm going to try to find her story back here. I'm going to go through it while you guys stare at the at the cute kitty. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still looking. It must be pretty. Ah, here, like Chase Bank will exchange one. Uh, somebody did that story, guys, and I forgot somebody mentioned it this morning, but I do not know whose podcast it was on. So I, I, I've been absolutely unable. I don't have the information I need to vet it. I don't know what to tell you on that one at all. Wow, gold. Two, two, three, three. Hey, Valentino, what are you doing, buddy? Being very confused about where all these sounds and voices are coming from. Yeah. It is. It's like, hey, wait a minute. This is magic. We didn't have this when I lived on the street. Yeah, no, no, no. He, he has made quite the move up. Uh, yeah, well, apparently I didn't need to. Uh, Valentino should have been in uh, gymnastics from an early age because he is a floppy kitty. Yeah. I, I've never seen one that floppy as flop as he is. That's uh, that is unique. I've quite literally never seen a cat that floppy. I'll have to show you. I'll have to send pictures of how he sleeps. You want to see something ridiculous as how he he goes about trying to sleep. It is, it's adorable, but there is just no way it's comfortable. Uh, Sherry Ray supposedly put it. So my my suggestion is you reach out. Jeannie Bills, um, let's see. Let me find that web link for you for them. And uh, drop it. Get ready to see it pop into your chat. All right, let's get back to a little bit of uh, news. Let's see. We did the border. We did that. Um, oh. Uh, this one, you probably can sound off on there, Zester. All right. <laughs> FTX founder Sam uh, Bankman fried yeah. sentenced to 25 years for fraud, was not ordered to give anything back, was not prosecuted for being Joe Biden's second largest uh, donor illegally, was not, was not charged for any of the political contributions that broke the law or asked to uh, pay any of those back. None of it was refunded. Only, uh, and the judge said, look, it's unrealistic to expect them to pay me back because there's so many different holders, a little one here, a little one there. It's just logistically not going to happen. Um, so, yeah. wonder how much uh, of that money is still sitting there waiting for him to get out. I know that in regards to, so our, our crypto attorney for the company, uh, Paul, who actually has other clients that were fairly large FTX holders. I know that large FTX holders were handled. And so people that had 100,000, 200,000, millions of dollars on the exchange, that they were paid back. And so when it comes down to it, there, there wasn't enough money to pay everyone back. 
Sam Bankman, Fried, Sam Friedman Bankman. Uh, his name always uh, results in a tongue twist for me. SBF. Uh, he he had obviously spent the vast majority of the money, and he had probably donated the vast majority of it to Democratic political candidates. Uh, and so there was no money to pay back the vast majority of the small guys, but there was apparently money available to pay back all the big guys. And so if you had really large amounts of money on the exchange, you got paid. If you didn't, tough luck. Uh, I guess they've decided that, you know, your $10,000 is not as important to the uh, the millionaires, $100,000. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was, time. I was reading comments. I phased out while you were covering that one. No, 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 no. Not at all. I, I did see a funny one, though, uh, asking what CBD do you need to give a cat to make him act like Valentino? And I can guarantee that. Uh, I don't know if they make absolutely one. Absolutely unmedicated. <laughs> He uh he gets nothing but uh water and kitty food, and for some reason he's still that floppy. Um, yeah, there are a lot of stories where Trump has done uh very very kind things, especially following nine eleven. He spent a fortune of his own money to help fallen officers, um, send crews. He canceled all construction, all repairs on all of his properties, and sent all of his crews to help in the efforts. Uh, at ground zero. No, he, he did. He went absolutely above and beyond and refused to take credit for it. Uh, let's see. I heard the bank story yesterday on LI and N podcast lady went to the bank and told the story. And then uh, somebody said, Hey, you got to go further back guys. I can only go so far back in the chat. It's a logistical nightmare when you have so many thousands of chats coming and you're trying to scroll back through. If I get lucky, I can go back maybe a hundred chats and see something, but Logistically, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. It isn't happening. All right. That's properly Southern. <laughs> thing. NJ0404, convert your money if it's held in a moldy currency account. Yeah, whatever the uh, official exchange rate is what you would get just automatically would change. <laughs> yeah, I'm just reading a few of those uh, in here. All right. Let's, uh, we got another couple in uh, to hit. And this is, Surprisingly, a story of your border and your border control. Romanian mob is coming for your debit cards with ATM-style skimmers now at self-checkouts, authorities warn. Romanian mobsters cross the border illegally, steal what they can, and cut off ankle monitors if they get caught. As soon as they get released, which they always do because they have enough money for bond, they simply dip, do it again, go to a new area, start all over, zero respect for law and order in our country. Uh, this coming from many uh, nations, not just Romania, but it seems to be very organized coming from uh, Romania with skimmers. Uh, they even caught a 14-year-old that was skimming as well. Uh, I forget what it was. He was driving a like $250,000 car, wearing a Rolex, all money he made skimming and emptying people's debit cards, uh, credit cards, etc. Uh, let's see uh, this one. Let's see. Skimmers can target EBT card users as well, have allegedly drained accounts the moment that the state releases monthly payments, according to Orange County District Attorney Todd Spencer's office, which announced a major crackdown on such crimes earlier this year. As a result, more than 100 million worth of thefts robbed taxpayer funded welfare programs of their receipts. Uh, they turn around. They uh, use those. They buy baby formula. They work with partner with cartels back in Mexico. Take it south across the border where they don't really care what you're bringing and then sell it in stores, pop-up stores, just to sell the goods from your skimmed, that stolen debit cards. And uh, in the actual skimmers, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen what they look like when they're placed on the checkout pops, but they are essentially flawless. You know, you're not going to notice that a skimmer is currently on it. And it, it, here, look it at was, these two units. It's look scary. at these two units. Slightly larger. They put it, it literally covers the existing one and then hijacks the information. And you still spend your money like you're at the store. You still check out. It works. They need it to work to capture your information and your pin. Mm -hmm. So it works. You have no idea. You just used it. The biggest thing is to look and see, is it overly large? Does it look brand new? 
Uh, honestly, there's really not a way to get around it. When you actually look at it, I've seen different models that have been built and they are seamless. They're flawless. I mean, even when you go to try and take them apart, because I've seen videos where they're actually taking apart one where they say, we know there's a skimmer here. We're going to go in and find it. And it, it's seamless. Somebody probably went through during checkout and managed to apply it on top of the actual checkout machine. And so someone most likely was capable of just literally going in there while the cashier was distracted, slapping it on top and walking out of the convenience store. And then they collect the debit cards of everyone around them. But in all honesty, Pops, because of the way the chips work nowadays, so keep in mind that your chip, when you're going through, I mean, it works just beep. All you do is just go right up to it. You don't even need a skimmer anymore. They are already devices where you can walk through a room of people and you can scan their credit card information off of their chip without ever touching them. All you do is walk through the group of people with the device in your pocket and it will record all of their credit card information by the time you walk through, assuming you have one of the new credit cards, the ones with the chips. If you have the ones with the chips, they don't even need a skimmer. They just got to get close enough to you. And it's not even that close. I mean, it's walking through the same room as somebody and bam, it's gone. You would never be able to track them down. Savvy is correct. RFID wallets are the only ways to stop that. And those are more scary to me than the skimmers because the skimmers, I just can't really do anything about it. At least when it comes to the, uh, the scanners, an RDIF wallet will will solve it. Um, yeah, a good reminder, Mr. C tomorrow, Mr. C tomorrow. And now I've got a very interesting one for you. And I wish I could play the volume on it, but I, I can't do it when I bring in a guest and do it. A uh, little short from uh, Blaze Media and Glenn Beck. And they talk about the algorithm and TikTok. If you are in China, it will, and you're under the age of 14, it will play, you know, really educational videos. It will, wait, wrong one here. Educational videos, kid appropriate, and it will also patriotic videos as well. Maybe they should do the same here in the U.S. if you're a kid. Um, in the States, it doesn't do that. You can watch, you know, uh, somebody getting mauled by a dog. You can learn how to squat in a home. It doesn't matter about you being a kid or not. But probably the most concerning about this, Zester, was that we learned that the average American, the average American spends 82 minutes a day on TikTok watching mindless videos. 82 minutes a day is the average is that the use average user or is that the average taken across the entire population of the United that's States? the average taken across the population based on how I took it and I'll send you the link so you can listen to it as well but mm -hmm. can you imagine having 82 extra minutes in your life to mindlessly scroll and not learn something or do something or function or plant your garden help well, somebody. I mean to me, that, that one just comes in then if it's all of the United States, that means that me with zero, zero minutes, I've never had TikTok, never had an account. I, I think I've made one for work before, but it, it, I never even used the thing. I just made it so no one else could take the name. And so that means that the average user of TikTok is not utilizing it for 82 minutes a day. They're, They're utilizing two or three it hours. for 164 Four hours minutes a day because for every person that's using it for those 86 minutes for that to be the average somebody's got to be doubling me and so i imagine that there are many others in the community that have never utilized TikTok, and so that's that means that the average user is utilizing it for three hours a day the average american user of TikTok would be multiple hours a day yeah exactly uh, Michael, Mr. C's not coming. He took a tumble playing tennis earlier this week. The first doctor's appointment they could get was tomorrow. The next one was two or three weeks away, which means he will, you know, have been spending weeks in pain uh, before that. So he took the first available. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, no, TikTok, I think you're right. I think if people are going to spend that much time on it, I need to just take what's meant for bad and turn it for good. We need to start doing very educational videos on TikTok and dropping them in there, see if we can uh, break the cycle. Oh, yeah, it, it is crazy. If you put out content on TikTok, it it pushes it. It pushes yeah, it. Less, Lessons in Love says TikTok can be very educational. I've learned much how to clean my veggies of pesticides, meditation, and so much more. I guess we can use it and flip it, but it's going to require us going on there and doing something different than our mankini dances, our father-son mankini dances, to see if we can get the most views, yeah. Yeah, no bueno. <laughs> yeah, and so Greg said I spend at least an hour and a half, five days a week on YouTube watching Mark Z. But at least it's educational. You get the news of the day. Yep. Now I'm just uh, reading some of these. I, I guess I'm just blown away by the thought of having that much spare time in a day. Which means I need to start doing shorter videos. <laughs> well, it is. Nowadays, the uh, the youngest generation's average attention span when they're watching a video or content, six seconds. Six seconds. And so, and then when I'm saying the youngest, I mean the youngest, because nowadays parents are handing over devices to three-year-olds and allowing their three-year-old to be raised by the devices. That generation is now sitting at an ability to pay attention for six seconds. And ironically, it's almost a double. And so from each generation, and it was somewhere between five to 10 years separating each quote unquote generation. So we're not going and utilizing the same millennial X, Y, stuff like that. But what they found was between every five to 10 years, the attention span doubled. And so you can go through and you can literally look at an age demographic and figure out, most likely, how long is that person capable of paying attention without being excited? And so, you know, for, for, you know, for, the, for the greatest generation, you know, it was somewhere around, I think, 30, 40 minutes is how long they're capable of sitting and listening to something or watching something without it being, quote unquote, exciting. It goes all the way down to six seconds with the current children in the United States of America. Wow. And no wonder schools are failing. Oh, think about yeah. it. You're a teacher. You got six seconds at the beginning of class. If you to want get to their attention, attention. pay attention. Otherwise, wow. they're gone. Um, seeing some of these, I'm like, uh, Kukla, this one I don't understand. It is Eastern weekend. Are you trying to say that you can't make it Saturday? Or are you saying we shouldn't have one on Saturday because it is Easter weekend? Um, not certain what that one uh, means. Darlene, I've heard the TikTok people get paid, but I have no idea how it works. I have no idea if it's much money. I, I have no idea how TikTok works. I have a TikTok account. Uh, when I was making socials, I made one, and people have released clips of me in videos on TikTok, but I couldn't tell you how to put one up, do anything, or not even certain I know how to open the app, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm seeing too yeah. many funny ones. Yeah, it's that's for you. Hitting nail on the head. I've seen moms in stores hand even their toddlers the phone to amuse them. Yeah, it oh, is. Dope. It's everywhere. Hey, I, I don't think that any child should have a screen i i you know i i think i would have been very very ornery with you pops back at that age but now now being older a little bit wiser i would look at the situation and say with what screens are capable of providing nowadays it's a whole different ball game back then there was nothing for me to do i could have played games and the games were actually difficult nowadays it's just uh it's gambling games, it's small addictive things, or it's social media. That is what two-year-olds to 18-year-olds are consuming all day long. That's it. And, you know, go, go look in the airport or go look in the mall when, when you see the, the kids having absolute tantrums and, and everything else. What is it always about? It's because the parent took their screen away. They're addicted. They're like little tiny crackheads. 
And they've actually there there's uh they they've done a lot of research and it surprisingly only takes like forget like six or seven days when you take away the screens for their innate happiness to go way up. If you get too much screen time, you're not happy. It's messing with your dopamine and everything else. Uh, I, I really should. We should try to find that study and share it, Zester. Mm -hmm. no, no, it, it's solid science. When it comes down to it, screen time, especially for children, it, it's damaging for all of us. Um, but for children, it's beyond damaging. It's essentially, <laughs> it, it's, yeah. You, you might be better off handing them a pack of smokes and a handle of liquor. They'd probably end up better off than handing them a tablet. <laughs> Bert, you are you've been too funny lately <laughs> or, or their cell phones you know, that, oh, fantastic example kukla would be when the at&t uh outage you know what three four weeks ago or whenever it was roughly a month ago now they were people were literally losing their minds they were pulling over on the side of the highway because they did not know how to make their commute home without their app to tell them where to turn and when to turn. They couldn't drive a drive they've done hundreds of times and get where they needed to go. They were freaking out and losing their minds. Yep. It doesn't take them long. It doesn't take them long. I never even noticed that it was all turned off. I was busy. <laughs> so I was like, oh, wait, the internet was gone? Uh, the only time I notice is when I need it for work. And then, then I'll get ornery about it and... That's just because work's not getting done. Otherwise, I always look forward to the opportunity when no one's capable of contacting me. Oh, God, uh, yeah. And that's like the best thing ever. They're like, oh, the, the whole internet's out. No one can blame you for it. I'm like, this is amazing. I'm on vacation. Um, I feel more inner peace than I could ever possibly feel when I know that device could start screaming at me in any minute that I have some kind of problem I need to solve. <laughs> I'm just laughing at some of these Thomas Brothers maps out in the middle of Riverside, San Bernardino. Ah, I like Matt. I, I can still read a uh, I can still read a paper map. Map NTV text and a new video from Nader. Hopefully, it is something good. All right, we should probably call it a wrap here, uh, Zester, or we'll be here forever. Oh, and good. They, they did remind me, though, Pops, I do have videos that are premiering. In, <laughs> oh, yeah. I have a video premiering in six minutes, and then I have another video premiering, uh, I believe, 30 minutes after that at 830. These are two videos that members of the community specifically asked me for. And so they are both um, in regards to setting up wallets on the Ledger Hardware Wallet, one for Hedera or HBAR, and one for... XDC Network, a company that was going for precious metal backing and facilitating trades. And so I had had a bunch of people ask me. I just went ahead and recorded the videos, and they are premiering one after another. And so two videos from the Crazy Kryptonaut are premiering this evening. I know that they are particularly niche issues. I don't imagine that the vast majority of people are having a problem with this one, but for those that are, the videos are about to exist, and that means that uh, I, I know a good 20 to 20 to 50 people in the community are about to be very happy and are about to have their problems solved. So I, I'm, I took a lot of time today putting out those videos for, uh, for a small group, but I'm glad to do it because I know it's going to be important and that it's going to really help out. And so I think you might be surprised. I think yeah, you might I, be surprised how many get watched. I, I actually, after going through it, and seeing how difficult the process was, I now completely understand why people were having issues. Setting up that Hedera wallet on Ledger was a joke. It was a joke. And so I hope that people uh, get a lot of use out of that one because I would not be surprised if I may be one of the few people who figured out how to even make it work. <laughs> it's a ridiculous system. And so hopefully people share it out there and it helps out a lot of other folks in, in the Patriot community who are also trying to figure these things out. Let me uh, make certain I do this real quickly. That is where you can find his link tree to get a link to his channel oh. and follow it directly there. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I suppose I hadn't even thought about that. I could also uh, throw in the link for the first for the first video because I do have that sitting in front of me. And so for anyone that is interested, I know though that it's probably one that uh, not everybody needs to check out. Yep. All right. Speaking of which, you got to give them enough time to get there. Let's, uh, Sarah J. The blue light glasses do help some with eye strain, but uh. Uh, the just the sheer number of hours in front of a screen uh, wear on you after a while, no matter how much. So uh, I think I'm going to try right now to talk Zester into going to get some uh, Alitas uh, this evening just to get out and see human beings. They do say it's good for your health. Yeah, I know. Of course, they don't realize most people are idiots, but. <laughs> no. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care. See you in the morning. Good night, everyone.